What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Mets Central. This is Mets Fan Reaction Game 108. As the New York Mets fall to the Minnesota Twins by a score of 8-3, to three, and they were unable to complete the three-game sweep against the Minnesota Twins. Now, look, while it was frustrating to be able, you know, not to, not be able to win this game and not be able to complete the sweep, it's still another series win. The Mets won this series 2-1 to one against a very good Minnesota Twins team that is fighting the Cleveland Guardians for an AL Central crown. But, yeah, like I said, while it is good to win the series, it does suck to not be able to complete the sweep, especially since the Phillies were actually swept by the Yankees earlier today, same time as during the Mets game, actually. And the Mets could have made up another game on them to, I think, take it to seven games. So they were unable to do that. But, look, you take a series you take a series win every day, like I said, especially against the good Minnesota Twins team. But going into this series, you know, we looked at the pitching matchups going into the going into all three games. You know, we, we saw Quintana was on the mound the first game. And I was on the mound the second game, and Seve was on the mound the third game. And we all thought that probably most likely the game that the Mets were going to win if they were going to win one game this year was the Seve game because he's been a really good he, he's been really good this year, and he's had a great bounce back year, especially from his from last season, which Seve was just terrible. Unfortunately, though, we we got the complete opposite. Jose Quintana and Sean Mania were the ones that were actually reliable and pitched very good, and they gave and they gave the Mets length. Seve on the hand today, Seve on the other hand today was just garbage the, the, there was i mean there's no other words to say the, the guy was awful garbage crap w whatever word you want to describe it said he was not good today didn't give the mets any length at all only gave him three innings and just while he he started off good had a good first inning but second inning he got a bit lucky and then the third inning he just he just completely lost it and yeah i i, I know the mets weren't really able to, to muster up any any like runs or anything like that but you know when your starting pitcher puts you in the hole early like that it, it is hard to very it is hard to come back from that but yeah I was at the game like I mentioned before on last night's post game but man I just have a bad history with seeing pitchers starting seeing starting pitchers for the first time I saw Max Scherzer for the first time in 2022 which was game one of the, game one of the wild card he shit the bed I saw Verlander I got to see uh, Verlander uh, against the Rays. That was my first time seeing him last year. He got lit up by the Rays. Then uh, a week ago, I, I got to see Sanga pitch for the first time. He got hurt. And then this is my first time seeing Seve on the mound. Then he shit the bed. I just I just have bad luck with seeing good pitchers um, pitch for the first time. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, before we actually get into the game recap, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. You know, we greatly appreciate your support on the channel. And we want to keep feeding you guys content over the rest of the season. So if you guys can just keep liking and, and subscribing, then, you know, like I mentioned, we appreciate all your support. So keep it going. And, um, yeah, let's get into the actual game recap. So on the mound today for the Mets, like I mentioned, Luis Severino. And on the mound for the Minnesota Twins, Pablo Lopez was pitching. So start off the game. Uh, Sebi got uh, Trevor Larnach to ground out to actually himself. He threw it over to Pete to uh, get the first out. He then got Max Kepler to fly out to Brandon Immo, and then he got Royce Lewis to strike out swing. So like I mentioned before, a nice, easy first, a nice, easy one, two, three inning for Sebi. I wish that it continued that way, but like we'll get into it later in the recap. It was not like that at all. Then bottom of the first. Mets got unlucky here. Francisco Lindor with with a hot with a with a far and a, a a hit a hard hit line out. Sorry, a far and hard hit line out. It was going over the wall. It looked like he was going to hit a home run, but Trevor Larnach just made a nice catch and he took a home run away from uh, from Francisco Lindor. Then Brandon Nimmo would strike out. J.D. Martinez would walk and Pete Alonso would ground into a force out and end the inning. By the way, two guys we have to talk about. Brandon Nimmo has not been good at all since the All Star break. I believe he's batting under 100 now since since the All Star break. It is not good. Like I mentioned on the podcast before, listen, I understand that Nimmo wasn't going to continue his hot stretch that he was on, you know, during June and until mid July. I understand he wasn't going to continue at that pace, but the fact that he's just completely fell off at this point, it's 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 a little concerning. I'm I'm hoping that he could bounce back, but he's got to turn around soon because he's one of the main anchor points of this offense, and if he's not hitting, then the Mets will struggle to. Um, to contribute runs and another guy, Pete Alonso, not good at all today. Not good at all. Went 0 for 4 today. A lot of uncompetitive at bats. One strikeout has to be a lot better. Has to be a lot better. Then move on to the top of the second. Uh, Sevy would get Matt Walden to strike out. Then on the next pitch, uh, he would throw 
not on the next pitch, but next at bat, Sebi would throw Byron Buxton a sinker over the plate. Buxton would hit a home run to left center field to put the Twins up on the nothing. Then he would get Carl San- Then he would walk Carl Santana. He would walk Ryan Jeffers. So struggling there. Sevy though would get fortunate as a fortunate double play, as uh, yeah he would get Brooks Lee to ground into a double play in and in double play. So thankfully he would get out of it. And you know at, you know at this point I was like okay you give up the one run the Byron Buxton settle down now and go on from there. But as we would see later, not the case. Then uh, bottom of the second, Jeff McNeil hit a single. Mark Fientos then, a guy who we've been praising all year so far because ever since he's been called up, he's been hitting. Mark Fientos hits a home run to make it 2-1 to one Mets. And, I mean, listen, the guy's got 16 home runs already. Listen, I'm not saying he's going to hit 30, but if he could hit 25, maybe potentially 30, I mean, that'd be great. That'd be great. Mark, just just keep on hitting, bro. Just keep on hitting, bro, because you've been fantastic so far. Then Jose Iglesias would strike out. Francisco Alvarez would fly out to Max Kepler and right, and Tyrone Taylor would fly out to Byron Buxton center to end the inning. Then top of the third, this is where it gets ugly. Austin Mar would single to get the inning started. He would then steal second base. Then Trevor Larnach would would hit a single to bring in Austin Martin. Twins would tie it up at two to two. Larnach would then steal second base. Max Kepler would then hit a single to bring in Larnach, three to two Twins. Then Royce Lewis would hit a double. He would bring in Max Kepler to score, four to two Twins. And then Matt Wallner would hit a home run to uh, would hit a two-run home run to make it six to two. So Sevy would let up five runs in the third inning without without recording it out. Not great, not great at all. Then uh, he would get Byron Buxton to fly out to Brandon Nemo. He would get Carl Santana to pop out to Mark Williams at third. And he would get Ryan Jeffers to ground out the Pete to end the inning. Uh, then bottom of the third, Lindor would ground out softly to Royce Lewis. Brandon Nimmo would ground out. And J.D. Martinez would be called out on strike. So a nice one, two, three, easy inning for a Pablo Lopez. Uh, then we actually got news before the game. Tyler McGill would be moved into the bullpen. He would make his um, he would make his bullpen season debut today. But just going over Sebi's final line today, yeah, like I mentioned before, uh, great. Three innings of work, six hits, six earned runs, two walks, two strikeouts, two home runs allowed. That brings his season ERA up up to a 3.93. Not good enough. Just not good enough. He he simply shit the bed. Now, look, hopefully this is just a one-off and Sevy's back to his normal normal pitching routine. But, yeah, not not good, especially since, especially since you know, now with Sanga out for the rest of the year. Sevy is the ace of this of this uh, rotation now, and it's got to be a lot better. No excuses there. Uh, but like I mentioned before, Tyler McGill came in to replace Luis Severino. He, Brooks Lee would hit a single. Austin Martin would then ground out. He would walk Trevor Larnach. Then a fortunate double play here for Tyler McGill. He would get Max Kepler to strike out. And on that same play, Alvarez was actually trying to throw over to second base to get uh, to try to pick up Brooks Lee. But it would hit the bat of Max Kepler, so – the ump ruled batter's interference on that play, so a fortunate double play there to get Tyler McGill out of the inning. Then bottom of the fourth, Pete Alonso ground out to Royce Lewis. Jeff McNeil hit a single, which, by the way, very good game for Jeff McNeil. Um, you know, we've talked about before that McNeil has been hitting a lot better, and mostly of that has been the long ball. He's been hitting a lot more home runs lately, but today he looked a lot more like 2019-2022 Jeff McNeil, just putting the ball in play and finding finding empty spaces. So good to see that by, by McNeil today. Vientos would then strike out, and Jose Iglesias would fly out to Trevor Lawrence left the end, end the inning. And then top of the fifth, Royce Lewis would fly out to Tyrone Taylor. Uh, then Matt Walner would hit a double. Um, I thought, from, from my perspective, when looking at the replay um, on the on the big screen at City Field, Tyrone Taylor really should have caught the ball. And you know, he 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 stuck his glove up. It went off his actually. It went into his glove, then came out. He um he stopped the home run from happening. At least that was good because there was an umpire review to check it was a home run. It wasn't a home run, so Walner would uh, walk into second with a double. Byron Buxton would then strike out. Carl Santana would then hit a double to make it seven to two. And Ryan Jeffers would pop out to Fran- to Alvy to uh, end the inning. Then bottom of the fifth, Manuel Margot came in to replace Max Kepler. Alvarez would strike out swinging. Tyrone Taylor would walk, and Francisco Lindor would hit into an inning. I think. Inning ending double play. Then top of the sixth, Danny Young would come in to replace Tyler McGill. 
Danny Young with a decent out, uh, decent inning here. He would get Brooksy to ground out. Austin Martin would line out, and he would get Trevor Larnach to be called out on strikes. Then bottom of the sixth, um, Nimmo would strike out, but he would take um he would take a foul ball off his leg, so he would finish the at bat, but he would he would come out of the game. Uh, J.D. Martinez would then walk. Pete Alonso would strike out, and Jeff Benny would ground out the end of the inning. So, like I mentioned before, Ben Gamble comes into left field to replace Brandon Nimmo, who got hurt. Uh, I don't believe it's anything serious. I think he just had leg pain, and that was it. So, yeah, nothing too serious there with Nemo. But Adam Adovino will come in to replace Danny Young. And surprisingly, a nice season inning for Adam Adovino, which is a surprise because we know Adam Adovino likes to make a sweat. But uh, he would get Manuel Margot to ground out to Mark Fientos. Royce Lewis would pop out to Francisco Lindor at shortstop. And he'd get Matt Wallner again to pop out to Francisco Lindor. Then bottom of the seventh, Cole Sands would come in to replace Pablo Lopez. Easy inning for him. He get Vientos to line out to Brooksley at short. Jose Iglesias flew out to Manuel Margot and right. And Francisco Alvarez would ground out to Carl Santana to end the inning. Top of the eighth, Phil Maton comes in to replace Adam Montavino. He'd hit Byron Buxton with the first pitch. Uh, then he'd give up a single to Carl Santana. He would get uh, Ryan Jeffers ground to a force out. Uh, Byron Buxton would come at the score, so eight to two twins. Then he'd get Brooksley to pop out the third base. And Austin Martin would fly out to Ben Gamble in left. Then bottom of the eighth, Randy Dobnak came in to replace Cole Sands, get Tyron Taylor, Tyron Taylor to ground out to Royce Lewis. Francisco Lindor would hit a single. Ben Gamble would strike out. J.D. Martinez would walk. And then to end the inning, of course, Pete Alonso would ground out to Brooksley in short. Then top of the ninth, Huskar uh, um, uh, uh, Brazobon made his, made his Mets debut today. He would replace Phil Maton. And he'd actually look pretty good. Pretty good. I mentioned that um, on last night's uh, trade de trade deadline recap that I like to pick up and for his debut, he looked very good, like I mentioned before. Uh, Trevor Larnach struck out. Then he would get Manuel Margot to ground out to Lindor. He would walk, walk Royce Lewis, but then he would get Matt Walner to call out on strikes. Then uh, Johan Duran would come in to replace Randy Dobnak. He would get Jeff Benio to strike out swinging. Uh, Luis Torrens came in uh, to pinch hit for Mark Vientos. Torrens would hit a single. Iglesias would then hit a double. Then Francisco Alvarez would ground out to um, Austin Martin, but he would uh, he would drive in um, Luis Torrens to make it 8-3 to three Mets. And then at the end of the game, Tyrone Taylor struck out to, to end the game. So, yeah, like I mentioned before, you know, unfortunate to lose the final game of the series. You know, you always want to complete the sweep. But, you know, you know, uh, what's it called? It's it is always nice to win a series, especially against a good a good Twins team. But yeah, to not be able to sweep and be able to make up another game on the Phillies, it is disappointing. But look, that that loss now brings the Mets record to fifty seven fifty one. They're still third in the NL East. Um, they they're tied for the final wild card spot with the Arizona Diamondbacks. So look now now the Mets head out west. They're off tomorrow and they start. Let's see a. Yeah, a three-game set against the Los Angeles Angels. So, listen, no excuses. The Mets should sweep the uh, the LA Angels. No excuse. It's it's not like last year or a couple years before where you have Mike Trout and Charlie Otani on the team and those two could single-handedly, you know, beat you. You know, Otani's not here. He's obviously with the Dodgers, and Mike Trout's out hurt. So, the Angels are not a good team. And if the Mets don't sweep minimum, then, yeah, it's, it, it's not a good series in my opinion. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the game recap. Like I mentioned before, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Also, turn on post notifications so anytime, so so you know anytime we upload a video or go live on the channel. And yeah, watch out for tomorrow. I will probably upload uh, a podcast tomorrow. It's probably gonna be by myself because Evan is still on vacation. Not sure if it's gonna be pre-recorded or gonna go live, but most likely it will be pre-recorded. But yeah, just make sure you guys watch out for that. Probably dropping a podcast tomorrow. So yeah, like I mentioned before. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out, baby. Let's go Mets.